collecting in transaction processing systems, web forms for transaction processing. Now, online forms can be used to collect data from users of a system. When a user enters their own data into a system, they're essentially becoming a participant as they are now a part of the collection information process. Since a user will have no training in the use of the system, form design needs to be user friendly, being easy to read, contain prompts outlining where to enter the data and overall be aesthetically pleasing to view so the user understands where to put the required information into the actual form. Web forms are commonly used in transaction processes as a mean to obtain data from users in relation to transactions. Members of the public entering their own data also increases data integrity, as if they are entering in information about themselves, well, no one knows them better than them themselves. Okay, they know how to spell their last name the best, thus they will most likely spell it correctly. So common areas of data which might actually be entered by users into an online form will be things such as personal details, their name, their date of birth, their address, their email, as well as financial details for financial transactions, such as account number, BSB, Visa, MasterCard, card expiry and security code. This collection process and the ability to collect this data through online forms has really allowed things such as e-commerce and internet banking to grow because essentially you don't have to go and visit a store and sign up or go into the bank in order to do a transaction. You can do it all through the internet using these online forms. You just enter your acquired data into the appropriate text boxes, drop down menus and radio buttons and through doing that, it gets sent to the database of the actual system you're using and then gets transacted whether it being real time or batch, either on the spot or at a later date. Now, as mentioned, just alluded to then, the backbone of all this is different screen objects as they can assist in the data validation process as essentially tools like drop down menus, radio buttons and checkboxes can be used to either limit or restrict responses which a user can potentially submit. In doing so, it makes it less likely for the user to enter in an incorrect response because they only have specifically limited responses to choose from. Now, as you can see from the example on the right, you can have open text fields for things such as your name, okay, and you type in your name there, but everything else can be kind of limited using those different screen objects to ensure that you're getting most likely correct responses. We can never make sure it's 100% correct, but obviously assist to ensure that data is most likely going to be correct going to the system. As also said, forms can be used for both batch and real-time systems, as essentially if it's batch, we can enter in, or lots of users can enter in a whole variety of different records, which will all get processed at a later date, or in a real-time system, as soon as an individual enters in their data into the form, it gets processed immediately, which might be something like signing up for a website straight away, their account gets made, they can start using the service straight away. So what we're going to do now is quickly look at a web form. So here is my web form here, and I've really got four areas to this, and I've got different screen objects for doing that. So firstly, please enter your name. It's just an open text field. So I'm going to type in my name. And as said, me entering in my own name, well, my last name is quite complicated, Kaladikas. So it's likely that I'm going to spell it correctly. Whereas if I was telling someone over the phone or a desk clerk over the counter, it's highly likely they could make a mistake in spelling my name. Whereas I write my name every day. I'm the best person to enter that in. So once again, increasing that data integrity. Secondly, we're using a drop down menu here to select what state I live in. So I'm going to click on the drop down and here are all the states within Australia. So I live in New South Wales. Now I can't type in anything that's not a state. It pretty much, I have to select a state. I could still make a mistake and accidentally click on Victoria, but essentially all the answers there are potentially correct. All right, there's nothing out of left field. So the drop down menu is limiting the possible responses I can put in as a user. I then have a date tool, so I can actually enter the date and actually gives me the format here to enter the date. But if I actually click on the calendar, it will select the date for me automatically. So I will put in the date that I'm making this video, okay, the 11th of the 6th, okay, it has inserted it in the required format for my system. So once again, the use of that tool, aiding in my data validation process and assisting with giving accurate data to the system. And then finally, some radio buttons for me to rate my experience, okay? And I'm gonna give myself a fantastic, okay? And through the use of radio buttons, I can only select one specific response. I can't select multiple responses and the actual button that I've clicked on actually links specifically to what my system requires. It will then tally them up, uh, all the users that are in their responses and give useful feedback to them in a statistical way. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of the great advantages of web forms. Essentially, through users entering their own data, 
they are the primary source and it's likely the data going into the system is going to be correct so it increases that data integrity and then through the use of screen objects such as drop down menus check boxes radio buttons dating tools they can all help with the data validation process as they can limit the possible responses that users can be putting into the system so i hope this helps you understand the great purpose of using online web forms